welcome everyone so we'll discuss this problem like you can see this problem there's a company called sagma corporation so this company it have 100 million outstanding share okay this company is having 100 million outstanding share you can see this okay now uh, this firm want to maintain their debt to market value ratio of 0.4 forever okay so the the objective of the firm that they want to maintain their debt to market value they want to maintain their debt to market value as 0.4 okay i hope you know that uh, when it comes to market value market value is the sum of equity plus debt okay so when it comes to market value it is sum of equity plus debt if the ratio of 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 debt to value if that ratio of debt to value is 0.4 so i can find the worth of equity so if the debt to value is 0.4 so i can write debt is equal to 0.4 equity plus 0.4 debt so i can see 0.6 debt is equal to 0.4 equity so i can say debt by equity ratio that is 2 by 3 okay so if debt by equity ratio is 2 by 3 so so the debt by value ratio will be 2 by 5 okay and then equity by value ratio will be 3 by 5 fine so you understood this so once you understood this part once you understood this part so here this company is there they have 100 million uh, outstanding share okay the firm want to maintain the debt to value ratio of 0.4 forever the expected interest rate on debt is point is 12.3% okay so this is the cost of debt so the expected interest rate on debt is 12.3% means that is the cost of debt the cost of debt is is 12.3% okay then the firm equity beta is 1.15 the firm the firm equity beta is 1.15 the firm equity beta is 1.15 so if beta what is beta beta is a factor uh, which measures how sensitive is the stock with respect to the market so we use normally the parameters of beta and all whenever we want to find the cost of equity okay so the 30 year government bond yield is 5.65 so this 5.65 is nothing but it is rf risk free rate of return okay so this is risk rf risk free rate of return a risk free rate of return is the interest rate we consider on on government securities uh, because we believe that everything in india can default but government of india can never default so the interest rate what government of india offers on on its issue that is called as a risk free instrument so this 5.65 is your is your risk free instrument clear everyone then then historical market premium is estimated to be 9% so actually uh, we use this uh, for capm model by using capm model we'll use will try to find the cost of equity so here cost of equity is rf risk free rate of return plus beta into rm minus rf okay so the here cost of equity this is a formula this is rf plus beta rm minus rf you can write as rp risk premium this is called capm model capital asset pricing model so we use this uh, to find the cost of equity or we use this model to find uh, the discounting or expected return when it comes to equity instrument so rf means the risk free rate of return beta is the beta is the sensitivity ness of the stock with respect to the market and rp is the risk premium you you know these terms okay then uh, then the 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 tax rate is 35% okay the company free cash flow is rupees 225 million so free cash flow is different from operating cash flow capital cash flow normally uh, in discounted cash flow approach when we apply discounted cash flow approach 
uh, whatever the 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 when it comes to the valuation of corporate we calculate the free cash flow okay we calculate the worth of the company okay so once we find the free cash flow so the free cash flow the current free cash flow of the firm is 225 million okay the company uh, the this is the current cash flow okay so we look into what all the future values are there and that way we anticipate the future values of these cash flows the company expect the, that these cash flow will grow for 12% for 7 year so it's somewhat following is uh, what you say two stage growth rate model so it will grow at 12% for 7 year and thereafter it will grow for 6% forever so it's a two stage growth rate model it will grow for 12% for 7 years and then it will grow for 6% forever you have to determine the value of the firm equity okay you need to determine how much is the value per share if the debt of the if the debt of the firm is 1500 million okay so by using a cost of carry model i can determine the cost of equity of the firm right this is the cost of equity of the firm rf is already given beta is already given rp is already given risk premium okay risk premium is nothing but rm minus rf rm means market return okay so once we we by using this formula i can find the cost of equity of the firm so the cost of equity of the firm is 16% okay cost of debt is already given right cost of debt is already given this is cost of debt tax rate is already given tax rate this is tax rate so what i can do now i can find the wacc of the firm why i need to find the wacc of the firm wacc generally help us to find the discounting parameter because in the discounted cash flow approach what we need to do uh, we need to discount uh, the future cash flows with some discounting parameter we here we are following wacc debt to equity debt to value ratio is given 0.4 so i can find equity to value ratio is points is already i did that so now this is the formula this is a formula of of wacc when it comes when we talk about wacc you can see this is weight of equity what is weight of equity equity by total value into cost of equity which we found by wacc plus weight of debt debt by total value cost of debt is given interest rate and 1 minus tax rate i think 35% is the tax rate so we by using this we found the wacc of the firm so wacc i got around 13% so once we got wacc as 13% once we get wacc at 13% then uh, we know that the firm is following two stage growth rate model so you know this is the free cash flow of the firm 225 million uh, it is growing at 12% for 7 year and then after that it will grow at 6% per annum so what you can do uh, you can find year on year basis uh, what is the what is the future cash flows of the firm okay so i'll do this i'll show you this calculation in excel i'll show you this calculation in excel like if the pre current cash flow of the firm is 225 million right this is 225 million okay so i can write the different year year 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so future cash flow future cash flow if i try to find future cash flow this is 225 million it will grow at what rate it will grow at what rate 12% for 7 year so 12% for 7 year so this will grow for 12% for 7 year so the what i get at the end of first year it will grow for 6 years so like this i can find year on year basis okay how much it will grow year on year basis i can find how much it will grow one minute
one minute so this this will grow this will grow to 25 million into 1 plus 1 plus what 12 percent right 1 plus 12 percent for how many year it will grow for six year minus it will grow for six year okay then after that you can find year on year basis the second year cash flow what i'll get it will grow for the first year cash flow what i'm getting the uh, it will grow for how many year so your first year cash flow after first year what would be it worth 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 1 so that will be the future cash flow of this for second year the it worth would be 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 2 correct for third year this would be 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 3 like this it will grow for every year okay for seven year it will grow like this way correct everyone every year it will grow like this way so every year it will grow like this way so here 225 into 1 plus 12 percent okay to the power one year take this cell so this what is the value you get year on year basis i can find this and this will be the sum total of this so year on year basis i can find this work for seventh year the value after seventh year for the seventh year the value will be 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 7 so that would be this much this much million rupees for eighth year for eighth year the cash flow will be 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 7 and then from eighth year it will grow at six percent then from eighth year it will grow at six percent into one plus six percent can you understand this so from eighth year the value of this firm will be what whatever is this value this grow at one plus six percent clear so now this this is the this is the worth of the asset if you compare two stage growth rate model then this is the worth for the super normal growth rate so this is the super normal growth rate so as per the super normal growth rate this will be the total value of the asset okay now this would be the the value as per the constant growth rate model you are getting me so as per the constant growth rate model this much would be the worth so we normally in discounted cash flow approach what we do on year on year basis we write 1 2 3 4 five six seven eight like this and then what i do i find the future cash flows so i find the future cash flows this future cash flows is what the present free cash flow was 225 million the free cash flow was 225 million next year the cash flow will be 225 into 1 plus 12 percent after one year then next year it would be 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 2 like this i'll do for seven year 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 7 okay then what i'll do then for the eighth year i'll find 225 into 1 plus 12 percent to the power 7 okay this into 1 plus 6 percent this is a constant growth rate model okay what i am going to start now WACC for you is is how much 13 percent is your WACC. So these are the future cash flows whatever you get is whatever the future cash flows whatever you get. Okay what you can do you can find the present value of your future cash flow. So that would be whatever these values you are getting free cash flow after year one. You will divide this at WACC okay for year one free cash flow of, of year two divide by one plus wacc 
for year two like this you can do for seven years so free cash flow for seventh year divide by one plus WACC for seventh year this you will do for year on year basis for all the seven years okay so here here the 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 year on year basis the cash flows whatever you got like one two three four five six seven okay then your future cash flows your future cash flows okay that was 225 into one plus 12 percent to the power one that you found year on year basis these are your future cash flows once you got this future cash flows your WACC was 13 percent okay so once once you get your WACC you can find the present value of the cash flow present value of the cash flow so that would be nothing but your future cash flow divide by one plus your WACC rate to the power one year so like this you can find the present value of all these cash flows you can find the present value of all these cash flows clear everyone so you can find the present value of all these cash flow so the sum total from first year to seventh year the sum total from first year to seventh year will give you the present value of the super normal growth rate period. So here in this formula, the firm is following two stage growth rate model. So I can find by that way or I can find by using this formula. This is the other formula, direct formula. This I, I just did by using GP, by geometric progression. I This is a shortcut way. So this is a, you can follow this shortcut way. So you can see in this formula, your FC F naught is 225, uh, the present cash flow into one plus growth rate, super normal growth rate divided by your WACC minus growth rate, one minus one plus 12% that growth super normal growth rate divided by one plus 13% cost of equity to the power seven. Okay, so if you solve this, if you solve this is 1%, Okay, this is 1.12. If you solve this completely, if you solve this completely, you'll get 1520.223. So 1520.223. So if you solve this completely, you'll get same thing. 1520.224. So you'll get the same thing here. Okay. And then and then what you need to do, this you need to from eighth year you have constant growth rate model, right? From eighth year, you you are having constant growth rate model where the firm will grow at six percent, right? Where the firm will grow at six percent, right? So you need to understand that. I hope you remember the for the constant growth rate model for the constant growth rate model the, for the constant growth rate model which is starting from seventh year, which is starting from eighth year, right? So what you need to do, you need to find the free cash flow for the eighth year divided by cost of equity minus the constant growth rate. So this will give you the, the value of the firm after seventh year, right? Now I want the present value of the firm. So the present value of the firm is the value after seventh year divided by one plus cost of equity for seventh year. So this will be eighth year cash flow. That is 527.247 divided by 13% minus uh, second constant growth rate is 6%. Then, then 1 plus 13% to the power 7. That will give you the value of constant growth rate model. Clear everyone. So for that you can see this formula. So you can see this formula, what is being done. So this, this is your, the free cash flow for eighth year. This is your free cash flow for the eighth year. So the free cash flow for the eighth year, what you find? Okay. So divide by the, uh, your WACC minus 
दिस इज डब्ल्यू ए सी के नॉट सी कॉस्ट ऑफ इक्विटी डब्ल्यू ए सी की माइनस सेकेंड ग्रोथ रेट कॉन्स्टेंट ग्रोथ रेट इन डिवाइड बाई वन प्लस डब्ल्यू ए सी सी टू द पावर सेवन ओके सो वंस यू डू दिस वंस दिस इज योर एट ईयर द वैल्यू ऑफ द कैश फ्लो डिवाइड बाई वन प्लस थर्टीन परसेंट डब्ल्यू ए सी थर्टीन परसेंट टू द पावर सेवन डिवाइड बाई थर्टीन माइनस सिक्स परसेंट इफ यू डू दिस कैलकुलेशन ओके इफ यू डू दिस कैलकुलेशन यूल गेट थ्री टू जीरो वन पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो टू फोर पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स the total sum of this this is the value of the firm so the value of the firm this is the value of the firm you will get okay the debt value the value of the debt is given to you 1500 million rupees so you can find the value of equity value of equity is nothing but the total value of the firm minus the value of debt okay once you subtract that debt value from the value of the firm you will get the value of equity and once you get the value of equity i can find value per share value per share is nothing but value of equity divided by the total number of shares outstanding so if the company is a public company then then the company have done the ipo and all and maybe further liquid issues whatever they have done definitely there would be lot of shares outstanding in the market which is there for the public to trade public buy and sell those shares so we will we'll divide by, by the outstanding shares with that i can find the value per share of the firm that is 32 rupees so once i found the value of equity value of equity i got by by subtracting the value of debt from the value of the firm once i got that once i got that then once i get the value of equity i divide by the total number of outstanding shares with that i'll get the value per share 